All right, guys, I'm gonna jump right in here on this push rod length and push rod length checking tool video. Got a lot of information I wanna to try to get into this video. Um, number one, this doesn't have comp cams or comp cams part number anywhere on it, nor did the packaging. So I feel like the eBay seller kind of pulled a fast one on me, I guess you could say. But this is the same tool that uh, comp said uh, that. I think it's comp 7200-1 or something like that. Basically has the internal, you know, one, one rotation or one turn lengthens the adjustable push rod by 50,000. Starts out at 6,800. But I just wanted to see, show you this tool that I'm going to use. Push rod length and preload I'm going to need to set these uh, lifters the way I want them. But here's some interesting information I found during this process. But these are 7,400, 80 thousandths wall, one piece push rods. Everyone refers to the stock LS push rod as being a 7,400. But I read online that the stock LS push rods were actually 7.385 from the factory. So I thought, well, I want to try that out. And sure enough, if you put a factory, this is a factory takeout LS1 push rod. So that's a factory GM LS1 push rod with a little over 50,000 miles on it, okay? Nowhere on the balls, everything's legit. And if you put it up against a 7400, it is slightly shorter. I know you guys aren't gonna be able to see that, but it is shorter than a 7400, and by or as a coincidence, it's slightly longer than the 7.375. So I feel like that gives a, a credibility to all those people online that said the factory LS push rod is actually 7.385, not 7400. Why don't I just measure it? Why don't I compare it to what I have? And sure enough, it was right where the internet said, let's not get sidetracked. Let's tear into this thing and find out what we can find out. All right, guys. I've got my my exhaust valve just starting to open so we can use this intake rocker as our test mule to find out what kind of length I'm going to need to set my preload. Okay, let's take this out. Now what I've got here is the length checking tool that I have lengthened to 7.300 even and I've got a little piece of black tape on there to keep it from moving because it gets a little she gets a little loose the more you open the tool so the way they tell you to do this is to set your adjusting tool in there take your rocker arm and just finger now, keep in mind, you can never rotate this engine with your uh, push rod checking tool in the engine, okay? So what they want you to do is just finger tighten this down while checking for a rotation on your push rod. What you want to do is get this bolt to seat, okay? You want to be able to tighten this bolt and that push rod still be able to spin because what you're trying to measure is with your rocker arm seated in the pedestal fully what will give you zero clearance between the rocker arm and the push rod then you would add whether you wanted 50,000, 60,000, 70, 80, 90 or 100 thousandths preload that's what you add to the measuring uh, tool. So let me keep working on this and I'll be right back. Guys, hopefully the wind ain't gonna get us too bad. I went and got my thumb drive. That way it's easier for me to work this thing down. Now here's the trick, is you have to make sure that just your fingertips 
can rotate that push rod and keep it moving because you you literally with no effort can start to compress the uh, the valve inside that uh, lifter it's like right there I'm getting a little bit of resistance okay so that bolt is seated in the in the uh, saddle that bolt seated but I've still got some play between there and my push rod checking tool hope you guys can see that the bolt is seated in the saddle for the rock arm but there's still clearance you guys can hear that that means that that push rod can move so now let me pull it back apart because I'm gonna have to take that tape off and lengthen that thing out probably 25 to 50 thousands hold on just a okay. second guys I lengthened my length checking tool 25 thousandths so it's now 7.325 we'll set it in there we'll go through this process again to try to find zero lash with, z with no compression on the lifter plunger because that'll ruin everything let's see here hold on okay that's pretty hold on that feels pretty good right there I'm not getting any up and down movement maybe a hair feel it it's just barely got a little resistance so that represents zero lash so basically at 7.325 the push rod length checking tool is saying there's zero clearance between the lifter plunger or push rod cup and the push rod cup on the rocker arm so now you would add to that 7.325 whatever your lifter preload is that you're after uh, comp cam once you'd run 50 to 60 thousandths uh, several other cam manufacturers rep uh, recommend 50 to 70 thousandths uh, Brian Tooley I think recommends 90 to 100 thousandths preload so do your research guys find out what works for you or what the cam manufacturer or lifter manufacturer you're using recommends um, generally you want to get at least 50 thousandths or more that way you don't get a super loud valve train but just remember when you use your push rod length checking tool it is to identify zero Okay, now keep in mind that tool and how you set it during this process does not tell you what length push rod you need. It tells you your base length between the rocker arm and the push rod cup with no preload, no compression of the lifter plunger. Then you add whatever uh, preload you want those lifters to run at you have to add it to the length of your push rod checker to tell you what size length push rod you're going to need to end up with the right preload. I hope everyone's following that logic. It's a it's the simplest way to verify 100% what length push rod you need and to know 100% what your preload is once you tighten that bolt down. Okay? So once you tighten that rocker arm bolt down, you're going to get your lifter preload with your uh, adding together the distance that's zero between the rocker arm uh, push rod cup and the push rod cup and the lifter without compressing that plunger. And you guys have to be super careful when you're measuring that, what I'm going to call base distance, 
because just your fingertips with a bolt can start to compress a hydraulic lifter plunger. Okay, keep that in mind. Get your base measurement, add in whatever you want your preload to be. Those two numbers together will equal what kind of push rod length you're gonna need. That's how that works. It's that simple. I triple checked my length checking tool and my base measurement is 7.325. So if I run a 7400 push rod on it, that should give me a 75 thousandths compression of that plunger into that lifter. Now, like I said a while ago, there's <clears throat> several different manufacturers and they all have different recommendations on uh, how much you want to run on your lifter preload. Um, there are a lot of uh, reasons behind this. I highly encourage you to go out there and do a little research on it. Uh, part of uh, Brian Tooley Racing's recommendation of running like 90 to 100 thousandths preload is following his theory of operation. The less amount or the least amount of oil that you will have underneath your plunger after you set your preload reduces the chances of valve float due to air or aerated oil causing that hydraulic roller lifter to float. Okay, on the flip side, comp cams and, and some of the others, they want you to have a 50 to 60 thousandths lifter preload because they feel like the engine will rev freer and easier with that lifter preload and I'm assuming combat lifter pump up or lifter float you know I'm not sure why there's such a large discrepancy in what people recommend do the research online please find out what your camshaft manufacturer or more specifically your lifters require because if you're running like a Morel or a Johnson short travel lifter, you're going to have a whole different set. Your setting of your preload on your lifter is going to be completely different. You know, do yourself a favor. Find out what kind of lifters you're running, what they recommend as the preload, or if you're running a specific limited travel race style lifter, follow the instructions, guys, or you're going to have a headache. And most of the times, those headaches cost you lots of money, so... Anyway, this is my video on checking my uh, push rod length. So uh, when I get to the other side of the engine, I will specifically check the length of that oddball uh, push rod because I guarantee you it's going to be at least a, a 7.425. I'd almost bet on it because with all the other ones coming out at a, what a 7400 gives me 75 thousandths preload that sounds good to me because i'm going to be slightly more than what comp says but not nearly as dramatic as btr so i'm going to just throw the 7400s in there i'm going to have to go and buy a longer push rod for that one oddball but that's fine at least I have the ability to check everything and make sure the lifter preload will give me 75 thousandths preload on all of them when I get done. Now I'm sorry to be confusing because I've got that one oddball long stem height, but that's just a long story. I don't want to have to get into that right now. So anyway, we finally got enough uh, 40 degree temp today for me to get out here and mess with this thing a little bit. I've been dying to get this push rod length issue uh, resolved, but we've been in the middle of the deep freeze with negative 20 wind chills. So anyway, I appreciate you guys watching my channel. Uh, please, if you have any questions at all about checking push rod length, hit me up because now that I've got the tool and I understand how it works, it's a super simple process, guys. Super simple. Anybody can do it. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. Please hit the little bell so you can get notifications when I upload another video. Thanks, guys.